Good evening, ladies and gents. I'm Sanjay Andradi on behalf of Magnus Academy. And I would like to welcome you all to the third session of our CPD program, Basic Applications of Design, Installation, Testing, and Commissioning of AC, MB, HVAC, Plumbing, and Fire Protection Works. Before starting the session, I would like to notify some ground rules, but we have already explained in last two sessions. But for your goodwill, I would like to remind it again. First of all, that chat box and your videos and your mics will be not allowed till the Q&A session begins. It means during the main lecture, we will not disturb the lecturer and will allow you to ask questions at the Q&A session. To ask the questions, you have to use raise hand option. And during that time, our organizers will ask you to unmute and ask the questions. Regarding your attendance mark, as you did in last two sessions, you have to mark attendance via the Google link, but we have, will share in the Google uh, Zoom chat box and the YouTube as well. So during that, please remember that you have, will, it is better to keep some screenshots in 30 minutes gaps. If anything goes wrong during the session that you, uh, if you are unable to mark the attendance via the Google form we are sharing, then you can upload it later, what we are share, what we will share in next day. Single uh, keyword, CPD program අදත් වෙන්න වගේම ඔයගලන්ට අපි Q&A session එකේ තමයි ප්‍රශ්න අහන අවස්ථාව දෙන්නේ. ඒකෙදි ඔයගලන්ට පුළුවන් raise hand option එක පාවිච්චි කරලා ප්‍රශ්න අහන්න. ඒ වගේම ඒතකන් අපි mics videos කිසිම දෙයක් enable කරන්නේ නැහැ. ඒ වගේම attendance mark කරන සම්බන්ධයෙන් Google form එකක් අපි share කරනවා මේ platform එකේ Zoom එකේ සහ YouTube එකේ. ඔගලන්ට පුළුවන් ඒක හරහා ඔගලන් ඇටෙන්ඩන්ස් මාක් කරන්න. ඒ වගේම ඔගලෝ ස්ක්‍රීන් ෂොට් කීපයක් තියා ගන්න. හරි සියවත් නෙට්වර්ක් ප්‍රශ්නයක් හරි පවර් ෆේල් එකද හරි ඔගලන්ට ඇටෙන්ඩන්ස් මාක් කරන්න බැරි වුණොත් ඒ ස්ක්‍රීන් ෂොට්ස් 30 මිනිට්ස් ගෑප් වල තියා ගන්න. එතකොට ඒක අප්ලෝඩ් කරලා අපි වෙනම ලින්ක් එකක් හිට ආපහු WhatsApp group එකට ෂෙයා කරනවා. ඒ ලින්ක් එක හරහා ඔගලන්ට පුළුවන් ඔගලන්ගේ ඇටෙන්ඩන්ස් මාක් කරන්න. Right. Uh, with that uh, I would like to introduce the speaker today the lecturer for the session. So he's a experienced character among us. And uh, if I introduce officially, he's a mechanical engineer graduated in 2008 from University of Moratua. And he's a chartered engineer. He's a building service uh, chartered engineer. Uh, and he has his, uh, he obtained his postgraduate diploma also in the uh, building service sector uh, from the University of Moratua. And the best thing, he has experienced 14 years in local industry and the foreign industry. Uh, altogether, he has 14 years experience, which will be very much benefit for all the uh, industrial people who are joined today. So without taking much more time, please uh, uh, welcome on screen, engineer Tushara Patirana. To conduct the session. Engineer Tushar, screen is yours. Thanks, uh, Engineer Sanjay. And thank you very much for your nice introduction. Uh, hope I am audible to you. Very well, very well, Mr. Sanjay. Let me share the uh, my presentation. The screen is visible. Yes, perfect. So, uh, as engineer Sanjay mentioned, uh, today our topic is uh, plumbing and sanitary services, including water treatment systems and introduction to fire protection system. This is uh, today's uh, presentation outline. Uh, first of all, uh, I'll introduce uh, what is uh, plumbing services. Then I'll uh, talk about the uh, cold and hot water supply and distribution systems. 
and then uh, sanitary drainage and vent systems. After that, we'll uh, look at uh, wastewater treatment systems and last, uh, the fire protection systems. So this is the introduction uh, part uh, for plumbing services. First, uh, before talking about the plumbing systems, we need to uh, have understanding about the plumbing, uh, sorry, building services. So there are a number of building services involved in a, uh, in a uh, building envelope. So this water supply and plumbing systems play a vital role among all other building services. Usually these building services we call MEP services as well. MEP, uh, the meaning of or the abbreviations, uh, long version is mechanical, electrical and plumbing. So you can understand the significance of uh, plumbing systems in a building. On the right hand side, uh, there is a detailed uh, diagram regarding the plumbing system. There are many uh, number of uh, plumbing systems involved in a building. Cold water supply, hot water supply, central drainage, storm water, irrigation systems, piped gas services, steam distribution, wastewater treatment, swimming pool, and fire protection. Likewise, there are many piped services comes under this uh, plumbing uh, services or plumbing systems. First of all, we'll uh, talk about the cold and hot water supply systems. So here given uh, two diagrams, which showing the components involved in a, a water supply system. Basically the components are the water supply source, it could be a deep well, a plant catchment, or a water storage, and a water meter is involved. And after that, the main supply, uh, then the supply rises, low distribution pipes, and sanitary appliances. These are the basic components involved in the uh, old water system. So in a high rise building, typically uh, this water uh, is drawn uh, from city main supply, and it is supplied to a a basement water tank uh, usually. Then it is transferred uh, to the overhead water tank by means of transfer pump set. And afterwards, this uh, overhead tank distributes the water throughout the building. For the uh, low pressure zone, usually uh, we use a booster pump set. And for the low uh, high pressure uh, or, or the low, uh, low area of the building, you can supply the water through gravitational pressure. So this is what the typical arrangement of a cold water supply system. The right hand side in the diagram is a detail given uh, the cold water supply and the hot water supply systems, the isometric arrangement of the uh, both systems. So this is a domestic type of uh, building. And you see uh, it's starting from the supply point and how it rises and then distributes to the uh, sanitary appliances. Before supplying water to any premises, we should know what water quality parameters are. Because uh, this is a raw water, uh, we cannot directly supply uh, to uh, users in the sense uh, for the drinking purpose or so washing purpose. Before this uh, supply, uh, supplying, we have to understand the water quality parameters and whether this water is meeting certain standards. Basically, these uh, parameters uh, uh, parameters are three types: physical parameters, physical properties, uh, then the chemical pro properties, and the biological properties. So these uh, things, uh, these uh, levels or the levels of this each parameter has to be looked. So the physical property involved color, order, temperature, 
melting point, boiling point, permeability, density. In the chemical composition, involves uh, the major ions, that is calcium, magnesium, sodium, uh, etc. And pH value, the total dissolved sol uh, solids, electrical conductivity, alkalinity, solubility, thermal expansion, etc. And the biological component of uh, these uh, parameters involve uh, dissolved oxygens, biological oxygen demand, chemical oxygen demand, etc. So uh, this uh, water quality should, or the water quality, these parameters should bear, meet certain standards before it uh, allowed to be used by the occupants of buildings. So here uh, is a comparison of uh, this. Uh, two uh, main bodies, that is World Health Organization, the levels or the standard values of the potable water or the drinking water. And uh, the SLS standards uh, are given against uh, uh, this uh, WHO parameters. So you can understand the levels that we should maintain in the water uh, for drinking purpose. To do this, uh, uh, usually we have to treat water to meet these uh, standards. So raw water has to be treated and its treatment process involves uh, several steps. First of all, we have to take it from the reservoir and it, 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 it will be collected uh, to a, a collection pit. Then uh, screening and then chemical is being added. After that, this coagulation and flocculation, uh, these uh, functions are done. Uh, in coagulation and flocculation functions, most of these uh, suspended solids uh, will be uh, uh, sediment, uh, sedimentated in the sedimentation tank. Then the clarification also happens in the same tank. And afterwards, it's, uh, it is uh, filtered through a uh, slow sand or uh, this uh, sand type filter. And after that, it should be sent to chlorination in order to disinfection. Finally, the water is stored and distributed to the uh, 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 distributed to the end users. So this is the basic steps uh, involved in the water treatment uh, facility. So one of the uh, very popular water treatment system is reverse osmosis, called as yeah, RO plant. Yeah, Tushara, sorry for interruption. So, uh, if you could explain the uh, in Singhala also when uh, it's come to a certain points, that will be a great benefit for the audience. Thanks a lot. Okay. Okay, Sanjay. Thanks. Uh, let me mom uh, product Singhala explain karan and then the putika. Pratamey ngapi kata karan yani cold and hot water systems kena. The pota cold and hot water system wala pradhan ma deeta mai ekhi dina components kato ekhi in a schematic arrangement, the Katakra component, some Mandu, Mulima water supply source, Sekadiro, it was a ethering main supply pipe with the water meter. Ethering had it was a summoning that took him a basement storage tank, a cup is Tokaragano, a Stokaragina, a peak transfer pump picking, a peak Tagano forehead tank. And even here, the main basic arrangement is given. That means, passive the main flow-wise distribution is correct. The cold water is supplied around the valley. Api water quality again, our own environment knowing the water quality. Eka api standard values filling. Na tu api te eka drinking purpose. Eka te hari na tu api washing purpose. Na parch kira na beh. Insa e e e sadha api water treat kira ganda washing. Ya e e jiga ta hama api water treat karna steps. Tika ta hama yar explain kare. The water treatment and explain uh, treatment and steps. So, Pradana Deval Tamai Lima P water collect Karagano, it was a chemical addition Karla, Lotharang sedimentation dwelling in a Tavia in Karagano, turbulent sad Karlevela, within impasse sad filter Sarhaevala. We never thought to disinfect Karagano. Basically, your steps take the end of water treat Karagano. Ilagata R plant take again Ilagata Tagre, R plant take it, Tapiwagena, uh 
කරන්න ඔස්මොසිස් කියන process එක reverse side එකේ reverse side එකේ function එක use කරලා pressurized කියන්නේ pressure එකක් apply කරලා ඉවර වෙලා membrane එක හරහා මේ concentrated solution එක තියෙන නැත්නම් water chemicals කියන්නේ raw water අපි යවලා ඉවරලා purify water හදා ගන්න move to the uh, next slide so one other may, uh, very important aspect is uh, water conservation uh, because uh, you, we know the water is a rapidly declining uh, resource so, so water in the sense the usable water so this has to be uh, conserved in every means in every possible means uh, for that uh, we can uh, uh, do many uh, practices uh, like uh, use use of uh, low volume flush wcs urinal controls in the sense this draw off uh, this uh, in end points uh, we can control with draw off uh, control with this, uh, uh, this like a mechanical or electronic means uh, then use uh, washing machines for clothes or dishwashing leak detection always uh, we can uh, update people for detecting of leaks in either forms in, in, in physical observation of uh, pressure levels or physical site observation then uh, use uh, minimum water for gardening purposes uh, and we can instead we can use rain water after harvesting and also the uh, this gray water recycling so with this all uh, uh, we, we are able to conserve the water uh, to a greater extent then uh, let me uh, again come back to cold water supply systems uh, cold water supply systems uh, basically we uh, there are two types uh, direct fed systems and indirect systems so uh, the direct fed system uh, the meaning of this system is we uh, pump the water direct, uh, directly uh, to the uh, this sanitary appliances the best example is the booster pump that we are using for uh, pressurized uh, uh, water flow so uh, using the booster pump what we do we'll uh, directly uh, pump uh, directly connect this uh, pipeline to the sanitary appliances and uh, once the sanitary appliances uh, the water is uh, draw off then the pump starts the other uh, system is the indirect water supply system uh, as i previously explained Uh, we 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 transfer the pump to a overhead tank and then uh, use of the gravitational pressure uh, we take the water from uh, overhead water tank to our uh, appliances uh, so before uh, designing a cold water supply system uh, we should uh, have some understanding on cold water demand So cold water demand uh, uh, plays uh, a vital role in uh, design of uh, this cold water supply systems. So here, uh, this table shows uh, the water demand of different types of uh, some buildings. Uh, for residential buildings, uh, uh, usually it is uh, around 130, 200 liters per bedroom. Hotels, uh, hotels also, uh, it is. Uh, between 150 to 200 meters per bedroom so offices shops and factories uh, usually it is uh, the, the water demand is around 45 liters per person for schools it is 15 for hospitals uh, takes uh, more water uh, 300 to 600 liter per bed uh, at some instances like the general district and general hospitals then sports changing it is 30 liters per person For libraries, museums, those kind of uh, 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 places, so it takes like uh, four to six liters per person. Uh, water demand of a resident building. I have given one uh, one 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 type of building uh, for understanding the water uh, uh, consumption of each of these uh, appliances. Usually, the WC suit takes them. majority uh, that is 32% uh, 
and after that washing machine kitchen sink bath etc those takes the next uh, uh, next consumption level after knowing the demand uh, we should plan cold water storage when designing a, a cold water supply system so uh, cold water storage usually it is uh, typically it is uh, the uh, like uh, half of the uh, daily water demand uh, so here uh, this uh, diagram shows uh, water storage uh, tanks usually we use uh, panel types tanks for uh, higher water storage uh, volumes over 2500 liters mostly so this uh, panel tanks uh, can be made out of uh, stainless steel uh, or uh, gi uh, let's uh, uh, galvanized steel or grp panels uh, usually uh, a building uh, will have lower uh, level uh, storage tank as well as overhead uh, storage tank usually or typically this uh, ratio between this low level and high level would be 2 to 1 typically but this changes this changes as per the client preference and the uh, types of applications uh, involved in a building especially when it comes to like uh, uh, large mixed use, use type developments uh, this will be different so this is just for uh, uh, understanding of this uh, concept but this is varied uh, with the uh, various types of applications so in the in the uh, bottom uh, one i have shown a drawing uh, of a uh, of a panel tank it's a, it's a plan view for you to understand uh, the the arrangement there is a central dividend and uh, always uh, this one part can be isolated and uh, accessed uh, for a maintenance purpose if all order systems can put that kata kari sallama for all order systems put them on singling explain karoting Direct and indirect water supply system, second direct feed Kelaki Waha make a teruma, a booster pump picking Kelima Sentry appliances or supply Kerno, it was a indirect water supply system make a overhead tank, you get a pump kerla, gravitational pressure parachicala pump kerno, cold water demanding and a katakara, each building type pekanua. Uh, the cold water demand nika api uh uh game nika gana atagara then in pass say uh residence building nika saman nik water demand nika for you did a kinek in a katagara. The passe api katagara, cold water storage gana, the cold water storage ya saman ning at the tema demand nika in king fifty percent samai saman ni uh in a storage at ye ute, now take a venas and a pulang application nika or building type a convert. About a storage tank, a storage volume, a exceed do not liters the last one seat of a year of his amani parchikarane, panel tanks, panel tanks, Kiraki Waha make a stainless steel volume the end of Pua, a thang galvanized reinforced plastic cake and a GRP volume in the Pua, a thang galvanized steel in the Pua. Pilakatapi Katakaramu, hot water system. Hot water supply systems mainly this hot water generation is achieved by uh, three main uh, uh, means. So, first one is geysers, usually, we see in our domestic bathroom or kitchens, then uh, the water hot water boiler, and the other one is uh, heat pumps. This is the air sourced is uh, heat pump. Similar to the cold water demand, uh, the each uh, types of buildings having different uh, uh, demands of hot water also. So uh, residential type uh, buildings usually it is uh, 55 to 115 liters per bedroom. Water storage is 115 liters per bedroom. Likewise, hotels, offices, shops, factories. This each building type have different uh, water demands and water storage. Uh, volumes. Uh, mostly, this uh, hot water generation is achieved uh, 
as I told, uh, previously mentioned by, uh, by means of boiler system or heat pump system is the uh, common, are the common systems for larger or high rise buildings. Uh, these boiler systems uh, nowadays uh, are not much used in uh, most of the buildings. Instead of that, uh, these uh, heat pumps, or air source heat pumps are uh, mostly used because of this uh, uh, high energy consumption. Uh, now the users are more interested in, uh, the clients are more interested in using these uh, uh, heat pump systems. So let me uh, show you uh, uh, or the schematic uh, instrumentation arrangement of uh, the heat pump system. This is a uh, uh, heat pump system having uh, uh, one, two, uh, here one, two, three, four, four uh, heat pumps. Uh, two sets are used for uh, uh, the use of the kitchen of this building, and other two are used for. Uh, the guest rooms for the uh, uh, sanitary purpose. So uh, we cannot uh, take. Uh, we cannot uh, just take uh, water out from the uh, these uh, heat pumps. We should have storage volumes. So storage is achieved by this uh, calorifiers. Calorifiers is uh, in the sense it is a uh, big vessel uh, which can be uh, used for storing this uh, hot water. So hot water, this uh, instrumentation drawing uh, 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 is having two circuits. One, uh, first one is a primary circuit, and the second one is uh, the uh, secondary circuit. Primary circuit, uh, 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 primary circuit. Uh, what happens is uh, these heat pumps, uh, heat pumps will uh, heat up the water and stored in the cal uh, calorifier. This calorifier uh, here. So. Uh, then uh, these calorifiers are connected to the secondary circuit. Secondary circuit is uh, this side. It is, uh, it is, uh, it is uh, directly connected to the system, uh, the plumbing system of the building. Uh, and uh, when the water demand is uh, high, these calorifiers starts to uh, uh, supply the water. Calorifiers, uh, calorifiers are uh, typically uh, pressurized. Pressurized in the sense the booster pump is directly connected uh, by means of uh, this cold water line is directly connected to the uh, booster pump. Then it is pressurized and pressurized water will uh, uh, flow towards the uh, guest room so the uh, uh, inducer point. Then we'll move to. Uh, an isometric view of this uh, heat pump and calorifier system is a 3D arrangement of uh, heat pump and, and calorifier system. These uh, green color items are these uh, uh, heat pumps, and these gray color big vessels are calorifiers. Uh, what you see in yellow color, these pipelines are the primary circuit, and these green color pipelines connected to the system is the uh, secondary circuit. And you have uh, in between this uh, primary circulation pumps, and then in the secondary circuit is connected to the uh, secondary circulation pump set. So overall, this energy consumption uh, is uh, very much less than that of the boiler system. So this is now very popular and uh, very popular among uh, many uh, building owners. And uh, it's the ten, uh, currently it is the ten, uh, trend. Uh, for forthcoming uh, 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 hot water generation systems. With the Kathagarathar, hot water systems sambandhu, hot water world tha karwa gema, cold water gema, demand ka kene ka import design akkar na kote. Yehoro hot water demand ka api samanen ka tu tehima, cold water demand ka eking samanen. Typically ka tu, siya panahak waage praman ek tamayi na mu peka rule le ka kine, mera sena ka building type ka kanuwa. I'm making a summoning up in Galada Hasak and the Pulwa. You need a design kernel of the system, a guideline to follow for a new one, a plumbing system, a design kernel of that. But uh, eka a regular post sticker and the Pulwa, uh, summoning up to him, a person again, fifty percentage of a plug, a monteca, and when you cut a mighty end. About a hot water system, a 
අපි ඩොක්ටර් ජෙනරේට් කරගන්න ක්‍රම තුනක් කතා කරා ගීසර්ස් අප්ට ස්ටෑන්ඩ් ඇලෝන් ගීසර් සිස්ටම්ස් යූස් කරන්න පුළුවන් ඒ වුණාම අපිට තියෙන අනික් ලාජර් ඒරියාස් වලට අපිට පාච් කරන්න පුළුවන් බොයිලර් සිස්ටම්ස් හරි නැත්නම් හීට් පම්ප් සිස්ටම් එයා සෝස් හීට් පම්ප් සිස්ටම් ඒක එයා සෝස් හීට් පම්ප් සිස්ටම් කියලා කිව්වාම ඒක සෝස් එක එයා ඒකට කන්ඩෙන්සර් සයිට් එක තමයි යූස් කරන්නේ අපි හීට් පම්ප් එකේ කන්ඩෙන්සර් සයිට් එක තමයි යූස් කරන්නේ කොට් වෝල් ජෙනරේට් කරගන්න ඒකට ඒ හොට් වෝටර් කන්ඩෙන්සර් සයිට් එකෙන් ජෙනරේට් කරගෙන අපි ප්‍රෙෂර් වෙසල්ස් වල එහෙම නැත්නම් කැලරී ෆයර්ස් ප්‍රෙෂර් වෙසල් එක කිව්වට මේක ස්පෙෂල් නමක් කියනවා කැලරී ෆයර්ස් කියලා හේතුව මේක ඉන්සුලේටර් ප්‍රෙෂර් වෙසල් එකක් මේක තුලේ වෝටර් හොට් වෝටර් ජෙනරේට් කරලා සෑහෙන කාලය තියාගෙන ඉන්න පුළුවන් එතකොට ඒක යූස් කරලා තමයි අපි සිස්ටම් එකට එහෙම නැත්නම් ගෙස්ට් රූම්ස් හරි නැත්නම් ඒ එන්ඩ් යූසර්ස් රට හොට් වෝටර් ඩිස්ට්‍රිබියුට් කරා we'll move to next uh, important point uh, that is uh, uh, regenerative disease uh, this is somewhat uh, very important consideration when we designing a building uh, this regenerative disease uh, uh, this is uh, is uh, source uh, of uh, bacteria we called as legionella legionella bacteria is uh, is caused uh, for severe pneumonia type uh, 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 disease and uh, it is uh, mainly this uh, bacteria growing is happen in this kind of uh, large uh, hot water generation plants and also on the uh, this cooling towers and other hot water involved uh, uh, this spa baths chemical humidifiers etc mainly uh, this disease is associated with hot water and uh, cooling tower this is the, the significant thing here is this legionella bacteria will rapidly multiply in temperatures between 30 to 45 so this is the dangerous uh, uh, situation when it comes to a hot water generation system so any design of hot water system should avoid uh, this uh, range of temperatures in order to avoid the uh, legionella disease uh, outbreaks uh, for that uh, this hot water should be maintained well above 50 uh, degree of celsius because bacteria will not uh, grow or not uh, uh, multiply in this uh, temperature uh, if if the temperature is uh, above the 50 degree celsius so designers has to consider this mm. and Uh, generate uh, hot water at 60 to 65 degrees celsius because in 60 uh, beyond 60 degrees celsius uh, this legionella will die actually they cannot uh, sustain uh, so also hot water should be maintained in distribution lines at 50 degrees celsius so this is very important we cannot uh, omit this part of uh, this uh, temperature consideration because otherwise it is going to be a disaster and also this all the branch pipes we have to insulate why because if the branch pipe uh, without insulation what happens heat loss will be very high and at the end point uh, the temperature will be dropped beyond uh, 50 degrees celsius that is again dangerous so we have to insulate it, insulate all the hot water this uh, supply and return lines and also we should uh, maintain a balanced flow always and minimize the pipe length involved in the hot water system so these are the considerations that uh, we should uh, very importantly uh, look at me dakwa katha kare athana hot water system eke thiyena thawat deyak thamai import consideration ekak thamai me legionella disease ekak avoid karaganne eka mokada heetuwa legionella disease ekak athi wenne bacteria ekki legionellis disease kiyana ekak athi wenne legionella kiyana bacteria ekak eto legionella bacteria ekak grow wenne ගොඩක් වෙලාවට 30 to 45 ඩිග්‍රී සෙල්සියස් වල තමයි මෙයාගේ රැපිඩ් ම ගෝ එක රෙකෝඩ් වෙන්නේ. ඒකට ඒක අවොයිඩ් කරගන්න අපිට හැම තිස්සෙම වෙනවා හයි ටෙම්පරේචර් එක හොට් වෝටර් ජෙනරේට් කරගන්න. අරවුන්ඩ් 60 to 65. ඒ වගේම තමයි ඩිස්ට්‍රිබියුෂන් පයිප්ස් වුණත් අපි හැම තිස්සෙම 50 ඩිග්‍රී වලට වැඩිය ලෙවල් එකක මේන්ටේන් කරගන්න අවශ්‍ය වෙනවා. ඒ විදිහට තමයි අපි ඩිසයින් එකක් කරගන්න ඕනේ වෙන්නේ. ඒ වගේම හොට් වෝටර් ඩිස්ට්‍රිබියුෂන් නෙට්වර්ක් එක ඔන්න ඉන්සුලේට් කරගන්න වෙනවා අයිද මේ NBR ඉන්සුලේෂන් හරි 
distribution pipes has to be sized uh, to do this uh, uh, we, have, we have a parameter called loading units uh, this is uh, this each of the uh, pipe line or the let's call it uh, the uh, pipe connected to the sanitary appliance so whatever the uh, end point has to be properly sized using its uh, loading condition that's what that's why we call uh, this uh, parameter as uh, loading unit so loading unit uh, is the uh, 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 is the representation of uh, this pipeline uh, that how frequently it is loaded or so the probability of loading of the appliance so this uh, figure represents the simultaneous maximum demand figure being carried by that section of the pipe. We'll uh, further understand this in next slides. Here is uh, some. Here are some uh, figures that uh, I will use for explaining for explaining the loading unit. So in this table in the middle, these loading units uh, uh, are given for each sanitary appliance. So wash basin, sink, bath. WC, etc. There are appliances, and based on the frequency of use, uh, there is another classification: uh, low frequency, medium frequency, and high frequency. This is uh, uh, this is depend on depend on the type of the application. If it's a guest room like thing, then frequency of use would be low or medium. But it's a public type uh, toilet or something, then the frequency of use will be higher. So uh, for pipe sizing, this uh, parameter we have to use. And uh, usually we uh, do this using a pipe sizing chart. These pipe sizing charts are uh, available in all types of uh, these plumbing uh, design guidelines. So uh, this pipe sizing chart have uh, uh, three axes. And also, uh, it is causing uh, another two parameters. Uh, in this uh, the relations. Uh, so the relationship is uh, in between five parameters. That is loading units, uh, the pipe uh, flow rate, or the flow rate, uh, head loss of the. Let me. This, head loss uh, in meters per meter run. Uh, then, the pipe velocity. Pipe velocity or the, or the flow velocity, uh, then the pipe size. So these are the things that uh, typically available in a pipe sizing chart. So let's take one example. Now let's consider a shower, and I will explain how we uh, size this uh, the pipeline connected to the shower. So if we uh, consider a frequently used uh, shower, uh, the loading unit is high uh, six. Only it is the high value is six. So here in this uh, right hand side axis, we can uh, uh, point that uh, location, and we can understand uh, this uh, location. If we draw a horizontal line towards the flow rate uh, axis, we'll, we 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 get the uh, flow of that flow requirement of that pipe. But when selecting the pipe diameter, we should consider the uh, pipe loss and also the velocity of the flow. So the velocity and the pipe uh, friction loss, we have to simultaneously consider. So uh, usually the uh, uh, designers, uh, when, when uh, use this 0 0.03 percentage of uh, loss uh, per pipe meter run. So, if we do, uh, if we draw this uh, vertical line, then uh, it is uh, causing this loading unit, uh, this horizontal line in some area, and it is uh, 
in between uh, 0.5 to 0.8 meters per second uh, velocity. So this is a good velocity for a cold water flow. So in the sense, uh, in other words, we can understand. So this pipe size uh, should be 25 to uh, 32, in between 32 to 25 outer diameter pipe because this pipe chart is uh, uh, is uh, for uh, UPVC pipes. So UPVC pipes always uh, we uh, uh, we uh, mention the uh, diameter in outer diameter. Uh, so uh, for this application, uh, the diameter between 25 to 32 is uh, fine for the shower, which is in higher frequency. So in other words, what we can understand is for if it is a medium or low use, we can use uh, below 25 of the diameter size. So here is a drawing and you can understand if it's a waste bathroom, 25 size is sufficient for shower. So that's how we size the pipe. Then afterwards, uh, if, if when, when we have sized uh, these all branches, all branch pipes in similar way, we can size the distribution pipe size. For that, uh, we have to add all these uh, items, appliances connected to the certain branch, then can calculate the uh, flow from the graph. We can take the flow rates according to the loading unit, then we can uh, calculate the pipes, uh, pipe size. So that is how uh, we calculate uh, the pipe sizes using loading, uh, loading units. Then um, uh, also important one important uh, uh, the parameter is the is, uh, pump head. Because cold water uh, uh, cold water supply systems uh, similar to the pipe sizing, the estimation of the transfer pump for the booster pump head is important. Uh, this is one uh, example. Uh, uh, or isometric view of a uh, um, uh, transfer line. So this is a typical equation that we use to estimate the system uh, head requirement. So uh, when we know these parameters, because uh, I'm not going to detail explain what this lambda is and uh, other parameters, but basically what you should understand is uh, always pump head can, can be calculated uh, uh, summing the elevation or difference and the, uh, this uh, parameter that is uh, pump constant, we call it pump constant into Q square, that is the flow into uh, flow uh, uh, the square of the flow. So in, in this uh, way, we can uh, plot for different types of uh, flow rates, we can plot the system curve of the pump. So this uh, blue line uh, represents the system curve of the pump. These are the parameters involved in uh, when involved uh, when we uh, calculate it. Uh, or after, once we uh, draw this graph, uh, then we need to check uh, uh, a supplies catalog uh, to draw the uh, pump curve. In other words, we have to select a certain uh, number of pumps, let's say, like uh, candidate pumps, like two or three, and take the best one based on the efficiency and the power consumption and the uh, 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 requirement. So, the point where these uh, two curves intersect, we call the pump operating point, and based on that, we can select the pump. So, I am uh, quickly touching the essential areas because uh, this is. Uh, Really going to be uh, introduction only, not uh, uh, detail uh, into this uh, detailed designs. So hope uh, you could understand. distribution pipe size loading unit parameter So the plumbing guideline pipe sizing charts available. Uh, when our different types will take and you PVC and the Puluang, copper pipes and the Puluang, you want to make the charts available, you know, the chart to use Kerala, 
रिक्वयरमेंट रिक्वयर सिस्टम so here the table shows the uh, the different types of valve and its function its function so this uh, is some of the valves we cannot use for multiple purpose uh, best example is gate valve gate valve only the purpose of the gate valve is uh, isolation is ios in the sense isolation right? ph is throttling uh, pr is uh, pressure relief bc is directional change so uh, this gate valve we cannot uh, use for the throttling purpose or pressure regulating purpose that uh, that this is a very important point because uh, many uh, uh, misuse gate valves uh, for uh, regulating the flow or throttling the flows that that cannot be done but the globe valve yes you can isolate as well as you can do uh, some throttling and also there are some directional changes change valve sign so likewise this uh, valve purpose the purpose of each a, a, the each type of valves must be very well known before it is uh, putting into somewhere check valve stop check uh or butterfly valve ball valve plug valve those are different types of valves and uh, here given the photographs for your uh, uh, further understanding then i'll uh, show some uh, types uh, water supply pipe types uh, there are many types of water supply pipes for cold water as well as hot water epr upvc cpvc ss316 that is stainless steel uh, di ductile and then the pex pipes so epr or uh, polypropylene uh, uh, random pipes uh, we are using for both uh, hot water and cold water application PVC generally we use for cold water. CPVC also we can use for both purpose. And SS uh, typically we use for cold water supply. And that pipe line also uh, for cold water supply. Mainly these uh, pipes are used for uh, municipal uh, water supply systems. And the PEX pipes. PEX pipes is a flexible uh, set of pipes uh, we can use in risers uh, to connect the sanitary appliances in 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 flexible way. Uh, so. uh we saw uh, uh front of the supply pipe types we kata kare uh, components can a valves and uh, can different valve types you know the different valve types api dana ganna one hariyata mokadda valve ekke purpose ek kela pavithi kene ekka install karanna ekena wenata design karanna kali ekata menna me table ek api use karanna puluwa passe different types of pipes kene kata kare uh the uh, old water supply water supply valve pressurized system is in this pressure rating ka tiena pipe types thamai pavichchi karanna wenne pr upvc cpvc then we'll move to the sanitary drainage and vent systems uh, our next part of uh, uh, plumbing system here also these are the compounds in old in uh, sanitary uh, pipe arrangement uh, you can see Uh, in this diagram, uh, this is the vent stack. 
then rent is taken from the uh, each appliance and this is the centering uh, so this black color pipe is the uh, drainage stack or the sewer, sewer and waste stack this is connected to the clean uh, it's connected to the uh, municipal sewer uh, network and clean out sadia for cleaning purpose so this is the uh, basic arrangement uh, so here given the components in detail sanitary appliance horizontal discharge pipe cleaning eye three strap three straps are used for uh, removing of this oily content manholes and then municipal sewer collection system we'll move to uh, understand uh, different types of uh, uh, drainage uh, stack systems so basically we have two types primary ventilator system and secondary ventilator system in the primary ventilator system uh, we just connect the uh, discharge pipe to the stack discharge this horizontal pipe to the uh, drainage stack right uh, some some people call this uh, riser right riser pipe so uh, usually the, the best term is the stack then the sec secondary ventilation system primary ventilation uh, i uh, again explain the function is the ventilation happens uh, from the sewer stack itself the secondary ventilation system it is different we have a separate uh, ventilation stack which is connected to the sewer or uh, drainage uh, stack so uh, it is ventilated uh, place to place uh, the, this pipe is ventilated uh, so it is a modified this third one is a modified version of the ventilated uh, stack because uh, we are taking uh, uh, ventilated ventilated uh, discharge uh, ventilate uh, ventilation pipes from the uh, discharge points so this is a modified version of a secondary ventilation uh, stack system to design the distribution network or the distribution uh, branch pipe uh, from my plants uh, uh, in between the plants to the uh, uh, stack we need to consider certain limit limitations for un unventilated uh, branches uh, these are the limitations uh, hope you can see i will enlarge it for wash basin or bidder bidder shower the diameter should be this in this range for unventilated uh, branches right maximum pipe length that uh, this can uh, go is, uh, is shown in this uh, column in the pipe gradient and maximum number of bends uh, and the maximum drop uh, of the vertical pipe so this table represent all uh, 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 design limitations that a designer should consider uh, to design the uh, this, uh, uh, branch pipes right similarly we can design bath or shower kitchen sink domestic uh, washing machine no dish washing machine etc everything we can design using this uh, chart right so this is for unventilated for ventilated also we have the same uh, same similar kind of chart in ventilator branches you can go more distance wash basin uh, even the size is similar uh, to that of uh, unventilated branch you can uh, go beyond 1.7 meters it was 1.7 meters in unventilated uh, uh, chart here it is 3 meters so once it is ventilated uh, uh, okay just uh, will not occur uh, in the in, uh, in similar to a uh, unventilated uh, stack so you can uh, 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 extend or, or, or use uh, some higher distance branch pipe these are some uh, typical arrangements of dis uh, discharge branches this uh, this this these arrangements uh, must be considered when you design branches up to the stack system that single in explain karo thing api kata kare central drainage and vent system api next important system ek or meke tiyena stack ek stack ek in arrangement ek anuwa primary ventilator the secondary ventilator the kine ek api decide karanna one building ek sa client ki preference ekak samahalawata meke balapana 
සමහර කට්ටිය ඉන්නවා නෑ මගේ කොස්ට් එක මට මෙච්චර දරන්න බෑ කියලා ඉවරලා ප්‍රයිමරි වෙන්ටිලේෂන් සිස්ටම් එකක් යන්න කියලා. නමුත් ගොඩක් වෙලාවට හයි රයිස් බිල්ඩින් වගේ අපිට එහෙම කරන්න අමාරුයි. සෙකන්ඩරි වෙන්ටිලේෂන් සිස්ටම් එකක් ගොඩක් තැන් වලදී යන්න වෙනවා. එතකොට සර්ටන් ලිමිටේෂන්ස් ටිකක් තියෙනවා අන්වෙන්ටිලේටඩ් බ්‍රාන්ච් එකක් ඩිසයින් කරනකොට අපි කන්සිඩර් කරන්න ඕනේ. එතකොට වොෂ් බේෂින් වගේ ඒ වගේ ඇප්ලයන්සස් ගත්තාම ඒ වගේ තියෙන මිනිමම් සයිසස් යන්න පුළුවන් සයිසස් සහ මිනි මැක්සිමම් පයිප් ලෙන්ත් එක ये वाले में पाइप ग्रेडिएंट टेक बहुमत है हमें ये ये पैरामीटर्स टेक अपने में टेबल्स वाली अपने गांडों पर बांध देना तो कुछ ये ये हम तो हमारे अभी अनवेंटिलेटर ब्रांच का डिजाइन करना सिमिलरली वेंटिलेटर ब्रांच के डाट ये जिधर में अपने टेबल लेकर फॉलो करने को आरा पैरामीटर्स टेक इटमाइन करेग එතනින් ගියාම WCS කියක් තියනවද ඒ අනුව අපිට මේ අර ටේබල්ස් යූස් කරලා ඉවර වෙලා අපිට අවශ්‍ය විදිහට අපේ වෙන්ටිලේෂන් වෙන්ටිලේටර් වෙන් සෝරි රාන්ච් පයිපින් ටික ඩිසයින් කරගන්න පුළුවන් එතනින් පස්සේ අපිට තියෙන්නේ සයිසින් ඔෆ් ද ස්ටැක් ස්ටැක් සයිසින් ඉස් වන් ඔෆ් ඉම්පෝර්ටන්ට් කම්පොනන්ට් ඔෆ් දිස් සුවර් පයිප් ඩිසයින් ෆෝ දිස් සයිසින් ඔෆ් ද ස්ටැක්ස් we have a parameter called discharge units it's uh, somewhat similar to uh, loading units but the uh, unit is different unit here is uh, liters per second so we have these tables of discharge units in all the all kind of uh, our design guidelines and we have to uh, once we have uh, arrived with uh, the layout then we have to uh, uh, determine or the sum up the discharge unit uh, of uh, uh, each uh, stack in the sense uh, the, we have to first draw uh, or the design the branches and the uh, stack then afterwards uh, we can calculate the discharge unit uh, sum which comes to the stack so based on that a stack can be sized uh, discharge unit uh, uh, total is uh, one example is shown here uh, for this particular example uh, in, in 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 one flow the discharge unit total is 7.8 uh, then the flow can be estimated the flow waste water flow of the stack can be estimated using this equation q equal k into square root of uh, the sum of discharge units for the 10 story uh, 10 story uh, uh, so this is the uh, number of discharge units uh, that is uh, 78 and the flow rate uh, relevant flow rate is 4.42 liters per second so a table is there to select the stack uh, for primary ventilated uh, uh, discharge stack uh, based on this table we can uh, we can uh, come to the uh, uh, decision that stack size is 100 mm because uh, 100 mm can go up to 5.2 liters per second so our calculation is 4.4 so stack size would be 100 mm so this is uh, primary ventilated discharge size obviously when it comes to secondary uh, 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 secondary ventilation this would be uh, less than this uh, 100 mm but basically uh, we'll go uh, not go be, uh, below uh, uh, 100 uh, or 75 mm for stack size especially for drainage so for Storage uh, uh, net, uh, storage systems will we have to go minimum hundred millimeter stack size. These are some different pipe types involved in uh, uh, sewer and waste uh, systems. We call it all, also we call it soil and waste systems, two PVC pipes. Uh, these are all uh, non-pressure type pipes, two PVC pipes, HDPE, uh, PP, uh, ductile and pass tank. So HDP and uh, HDP, uh, the long version is uh, high density polyethylene, PP is uh, polypropylene. Uh, this is also uh, used for this uh, sewer and waste systems. Uh, cast iron pipes mostly used for uh, the kitchen waste, uh, mostly used for kitchen waste. Then, uh, there are some uh, uh, figures showing sensory equipment. 
and uh, the, the last one is the center accommodation that is uh, uh, the place that where all the sanitary appliances are uh, installed typically a bathroom so uh, wc uh, the kitchen sink uh, this uh, bath uh, basin bath tub so these are how these are connected the uh, is shown in this diagram the arrangement of the vents and the sewer discharge pipe uh, loading unit katha karage mo poda signal explain karo thing api spec size karaganda ara vidiyama discharge units paavichi karana discharge unit kila parameter ekak paavichi karana ekin karanne hama appliance ekema discharge unit ekak calculate karala total sum up karala stack stack ekata adala thiyena discharge unit ekak sum up karala ekin api flow rate ekak stack ekake flow rate ekak determine karaganna etani passe apita thiyena tables select karaganda මොකද්ද ගැලපෙන ස්ටැක් එක කියන එක ඉන් ඩිෆරන්ට් පයිප් ටයිප්ස් ගැන කතා කරා පස්සේ එන්ට්‍රි ඉක්විප්මන්ට් ගැන කතා කරා එන්ට්‍රි ඉක්විප්මන්ට් ගැන කතා කරාම පස්සේ අපි ඊළඟට කතා කරන්න ඕනේ වැඩගත් තවත් ටොපික් එකක් තියෙනවා දැට් ඉස් වේස්ට් වෝටර් ට්‍රීට්මන්ට් සිස්ටම් So this is the next important part of our presentation: wastewater treatment system. What is wastewater? Wastewater can be classified into two uh, types: grey water and black water. Grey water is generated uh, from household wastewater, uh, that is shower, baths, and washing machines. Basically, this can be recycled and used for toilet flushing. Then the black water. Black water is the water that is generated. from toilets dishwashers and the kitchen it contains high con concentration of organic matter and bacteria and it need to be treated appropriately by biological and chemical methods then uh, we'll move to the arrangement of the treatment system uh, collection and treatment system so this is the poor collection and treatment uh, schematic arrangement typically it starts from the house uh, to the inspection chamber then the municipal uh, sewer network comprises of this uh, lateral piping and manholes and uh, main gravity main piping in the lifting station so we call it pump stations so this is the collection area then it is pumped to the spp sewerage treatment plant and after sewerage treatment this uh, effluent water will be discharged to a uh uh inland water surface or uh, to the sea uh but only after confirming that the effluent met the desired uh, parameters of the uh, uh content of the water so this is the sewage treatment process in detail first of all this sewer has to be uh, screened at uh, screening uh, area so this number 1 shows the uh, sorry number 2 one number 1 is the pumping station the number 2 is the by screening so after screening process is uh, said to uh uh sedimentation you know the set primary settling right primary settling tank then uh, at the primary settling tank this uh, water and sludge are uh class uh, separator and the water is flow uh, flown to a, to the aeration tank while the sludge is pumped to a sludge dry bed sludge dry area then uh, after aeration process this uh, bacteria and this all uh, types of uh, this uh, biological uh, uh, microorganisms will be uh, uh, treated after that the water effluent will be again sent to a secondary settling tank the secondary settling tank uh, what happen it will be further this uh, solid parties uh, particles will be further suspend uh, so further uh, sedimentated in afterwards it will pump to the uh, chlorination chlorination area for this inspection because if some bacteria remains then it has to be uh, uh, disinfected and pumped to the 
pump to a uh, inland water use after confirming that it met the uh, F1 required or approved uh, F1 uh, parameters. These are some components involved in STP. This is a submersible pump in, involved in a lifting station. So these submersible pumps, uh, uh, this, is, uh, this is some special arrangement because this uh, we know in the in, inside of a sewer pit, we cannot uh, reach uh, the pump uh, frequently. So uh, uh, we have to lift the pump up uh, for the maintenance purpose. And after maintenance is done, pump has to be again uh, go over to the pump pit. But this cannot be uh, done if if this uh, connection is uh, done uh, by uh, flange uh, or this uh, flange connection. So what we'll do? This connection is not a uh, not a flange connection. It we call we usually call it quick coupling because uh, it's uh, just uh, it's it's having an angle and it's just uh, uh, kept on the uh, uh, this. Uh, this bend arrangement and it is automatically coupled. So this is how uh, the pump uh, it is uh, uh, designed. Pump can be lifted up or lowered down so that it will be seated on the uh, discharge pipe, uh, this uh, outlet. And it will, it will not be, uh, it, it will be automatically coupled to the, uh, uh, this uh, out, uh, outlet pipe. Then uh, these are some components still involved in aeration process. So aeration tanks usually have uh, this uh, media uh, to go, uh, to the bacteria to go. Uh, there are two types of aerations uh, available. One is this uh, uh, aeration tank uh, with uh, this uh, bioreactors, bio, bio and the other one is the rotating uh, disc contactor. This is also uh, a simulation of this uh, uh, larger aeration tank. Here, uh, the water moves. Here, water is uh, stilling in a, in, a, in a tank, and uh, the disc contactor is moved instead of the water. So the biological formation happens, and the treatment is uh, happens. Uh, aeration treatment happens. After all, the treated water quality should meet specific parameters. Basically, uh, we discuss here four parameters: that is, pH level, BOD level, C, uh, chemical oxygen demand, uh, total suspended solid. These uh, parameters should uh, arrive in uh, the treated water quality parameters. That is, uh, pH value should be between 6.5 to 8.5. BOD should be below 40, well below 40. Uh, COD should be uh, below 250. Uh, uh, total suspended solid should be less than 150 milligram per liter. So these parameters should be essentially meet. And uh, further to this, we have to uh, consider local environmental uh, regulations uh, uh, before we are putting this uh, water to uh, in, uh, inland use. So uh, inland uh, mix with inland water or the sea. Important item water treat, uh, sewerage treatment plant can sewerage treatment plant take a process that time process take a uh put us keep at Tino screening for Pratoming when physically uh remove the neck physically a bit screen curla water separate karagana uh TNS particles I incur again plus a primary settling primary settling will be when it's like a settle villa uh what would it know it was a big up both critic aeration tanks or devil aeration was a sicker gun it was second settling uh it was a logic of even a pump color dry bit of the other side uh when i'm a bit of one process car again when i'm going to use car gun it was a uh uh secondary settling it you know it was the my uh coordination and at the uv treatment take care of me bacteria to let you put it in a disinfection for me i can Peter different to capital Pulang or parameters to meet to number six inland water. The Harin Himata, see Muda to the Harin. Pradana components keep back in a category. Katamay may be again a seating station or a parish in a submersible pumps 
arrangement ek kohomada kiyen eka gana katha kare ekota eka apita hamisthama apita branch joints walin eka connect karaganna amaru mokada maintenance wala to utara ganna eka lazy wenne naha super pit ekka break karaganna api pawach karanne quick coupling arrangement ekak kiyala api usually kiyanne ekata eka eke arrangement ekak thamai pump ekak giila seat wenawa outlet ekak uda automatically couple wenawa thiyena arrangement ekak e widiyaka thiyen ඔස ඇරේෂන් ප්‍රොසෙස් එක ගැන කතා කරේ ඇරේෂන් ටැංක් වල යුෂුවලි එනවා මේ කියන බයෝලොජිකල් කන්ටැක්ටර්ස් එනවා ඒතර මේකට තමයි බැක්ටීරියා ග්‍රෝ වෙන්නේ මේකට බැක්ටීරියා ග්‍රෝ වෙන්න ඒ ඕන කරන ඒරියා සර්ෆස් ඒරියා එක තමයි මේ මේ අර කොගිස් කට වගේ ඒ වගේ අවේලබල් වෙන්නේ ඒතර ඒකට බැක්ටීරියා ග්‍රෝ වුණාම් පස්සේ මේ බැක්ටීරියා ස්ලජ් එක කාලෙ ඉවරලා එයා සජ්ජ කැටියට තැම්පත් වෙනවා කියන සුව එක කාලේ වෙනවා සජ්ජ කැටියට තැම්පත් වෙනවා ඒ විදිහට වතුර ට්‍රීට් වෙනවා වතුර ට්‍රීට් වෙලා ඒකෙන් ඉලියට ගන්න පුළුවන් ඒ වගේම තවත් ඇරේන්ජ්මන්ට් එකක් තමයි රොටේටිං බයෝලොජිකල් ඩිස්කන්ටැක්ටර් කියන එක ඒතර මේක වෙන්න මේ ඩිස්ක් වල මේ බයෝෆිල්ම්ස් හැදෙනවා බයෝෆිල්ම්ස් හැදිලා ඒකෙත් තර විදිහටම වතුරේ තියෙන සුව එක මෙයා කන්සියුම් කරලා සජ්ජ එක විදිහට තැම්පත් වෙනවා ෆීඩඩ් වෝටර් ඊට යන ඒතර ෆීඩඩ් වෝටර් හැම දිස්සෙම මේ ෆීඩඩ් වෝටර් කොලිටි පැරාමීටර්ස් මේ කරන්න අවශ්‍ය වෙනවා so we'll move to uh, next one important uh, pipe service that is uh, fire protection system uh, this is the last component of uh, our, our pipe service that is uh, fire protection system so basically we have three types of fire protection system post rail system uh, wet riser system and the automatic sprinkler system so uh, this is also hydraulic uh, hydraulically we have to design hydraulic uh, means uh, but there are certain standards to follow uh, for design of force free system there is a bs5306 uh, and nfpa uh, standards uh, also in sri lanka we have cda regulations uh, recently published uh, usually nowadays we use cda uh, 2018 publication uh, uh, for designing of force free systems the requirement has to be first considered any buildings which exceed floor area more than 800 square meters need force free systems so mounting detail of the hose reel is uh, shown in the photograph uh, it should be mounted uh, uh, 900 mm above the floor level uh, the design flow rate should be 30 liters per minute per hose reel the pump flow rate has to be estimated considering a uh, simultaneous operation of two hose reels this is as per the bsn uh, cda regulation uh, diameter of the supply pipes should not be less than 50 mm the uh, uh, height of the building is uh, less than 15 uh, mm can go for 50 mm uh, size if the height is uh, higher than 15 m uh, diameter then we uh, go to supply pipe will be 65 mm working pressure of the nozzle the nozzle working pressure of the nozzle should be 3 bar for small one that is 4.8 mm and 1.25 bar for 6.35 mm nozzle water jet should Uh, shall not be less than uh, six meter through. So this is the basic considerations for designing the force free system. Uh, then we'll move to wet riser system. This is uh, uh, one of uh, important uh, system uh, when it comes to fire protection. wet riser the meaning is that the risers are always uh, filled with water pressurized water so uh, building exceed uh, 18 meter height uh, should be provided with wet riser system so uh, that is the regulations uh, in, in local regulations also uh, in a, in a certain uh, rising main maximum pressure should not exceed 20 bar so these are the considerations that we have to follow per riser the area coverage should be 900 square meter 
uh, uh, maximum. If flow area over uh, 900 square meters, uh, uh, then we have to provide 60 meter apart uh, uh, prices of 60 meter apart. Price main pipe sizes are uh, 100 and 150 millimeter. 100 millimeter if uh, each level have one landing well. 150 each level have two landing wells. So what the water pressure at the nozzle should be four bar or 400 kilopascal. Usually, this wet pricing system, uh, uh, the pressure is uh, temperaturally higher because uh, you understand the reason. The pressure of the nozzle is should be four bar. So when we hydro, uh, we when we calculate the uh, hydraulically calculate the uh, pressure requirement, the pump pressure always uh, go higher. Maximum height is uh, 60 meter the riser. Then, uh, uh, if the height is uh, more than 60 meter, then we have additional uh, additionally boost the uh, additionally uh, provide the boosting facility. So the riser diameters also we have to select based on the building height. Uh, then the storage capacity that is very important. Uh, these tanks are also made out of uh, this uh, GRP or uh, panel tanks, typically. So storage capacity uh, uh, should be sufficient for 45 minutes uh, 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 time. If, if a fire happens, then this tank should be able to provide water for 45 minutes. That is how the tank sizing is done. So minimum requirement is 67.5 uh, cubic meters uh, for the uh, wet riser system. So these are the components involved in a wet riser system. Landing well with the pressure regulator type, because if the pressure is higher at the supply point, then we use this uh, with the pressure regulation facility, then the normal landing well. Uh, then the cabinet uh, with the fire hose, filler hydrant, uh, breaching inlet. This is the uh, also called as the fire, uh, uh, fire department inlet. Because the fire department, uh, their pipeline is usually connected to this uh, breaching inlet uh, so that it is connected to the system. Then the next important uh, fire protection uh, system is automatic sprinkler system. And this has to, uh, this uh, installation uh, should be based on uh, local uh, regulations, uh, mostly uh, uh, local designs are done according to the, the local regulations which is also uh, 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 taken care of, which is also uh, considered uh, the bs12845 uh, standard so according to that uh, should this should be installed in all indoor car parks all high rise and uh, super high rise buildings any part of a basement so which is used as a place of public resort shops or things right. likewise uh, these uh, areas of installation must be uh, uh, clearly identified. And afterwards, we have to, uh, uh, for the design purpose, we have to follow either these local regulations, so uh, BS standard or NFPA standard. This is uh, this all are acceptable, accepted in uh, local context. These are the components uh, or the isometric arrangement of uh, uh, sprinkler system. Fire pumps are there. Water tank uh, typically uh, the water tank uh, uh, should be uh, uh, above the suction uh, pipes of the uh, uh, pumps because uh, this is uh, uh, significant uh, because this is uh, mandatory now in the local local regulations as well. Uh, then uh, the sprinkler uh, riser before the riser there is. Uh, uh, sprinkler control valve with the water motor alarm room and then each flow there is a distribution pipe and before the uh, at the distribution pipe start uh, location there is a flow control valve arrangement so these are the components involved in generally and this is a uh, sprinkler photograph of sprinkler so there are many things that uh, we should uh, know for designing a uh, Fire protection system 
with Pfizer automatic sprinkler system or uh, uh, grocery system. So this is just uh, for you to be, uh, you can, uh, have basic understanding. And for starting from this, uh, then uh, we have to uh, follow these uh, standards and guidelines to uh, design a comprehensive system. Then pump, uh, fire pump installation, some consideration, important points to consider when installing a fire pump. Uh, typically, the fire pump room shall be constructed within uh, with two hours fire rating. Each pump shall be driven by a dedicated driver and a controller. Pumps shall be supplied with positive head storage tank, what I previously explained. With dedicated tanks use water level alarms should be available. Because uh, water level, if uh, it is uh, uh, not, uh, not uh, alarm, then we don't know the water is available or not. So that is very important. For pump commissioning, we have to follow three steps. Uh, we have to see pump operation with no flow and the rated capacity uh, of the pump is uh, met uh, and the overload, that is pump is discharging water at a rate of 154% of the rated flow at the pressure of 65% of rated pressure. So these are the essential things that uh, uh, a designer or engineer should uh, do before pump, uh, for pump function. So the things we uh, studied today, uh, all things I explained today is uh, are the basics and the initial uh, uh, for, for initiating uh, any engineer to uh, involve in plumbing industry. Uh, with these basics, uh, hopefully you can uh, uh, go uh, uh, forward. And you, but you have to uh, uh, be thorough with this uh, design uh, guidelines and standards uh, to be uh, uh, practiced well in the uh, plumbing industry. So with this, uh, uh, this is the end of uh, my uh, presentation. And hope uh, you got uh, something out of it. And thank you. If there is any question, then it's uh, time, to, time for you to uh, raise. Yeah, thank you, thank you, uh, Engineer Tushara, the, the valuable uh, engineering knowledge you have shared with us. Actually, it's a vast area. I think uh, it's very tough to narrate within one and a half hour time, but you have done a brilliant job, I believe, and all the audience will be satisfied about the uh, knowledge they got. And I think this is a great eye opener. And it is time to the audience, if you have any questions, you can raise your hand and we can give the opportunity. Uh, to ask your questions. We have uh, Eranga. Eranga Vitanage, please raise your question. Uh, hi, uh, can you audible to me? Audible yeah, to you? Very well, very well, very well. Yeah. Very well. Uh, Engineer Tushara, thank you very much uh, for your brilliant presentation. And it is uh, very clear that uh, you had the whole uh, uh, basic covered. Uh, I have one question. Actually, I'm joining to the CPD from uh, UAE. Uh, under the fire, fire system, uh, we are getting, uh, uh, I mean, we are, we are having the fire system called fire suppression, especially, specifically like... Uh, uh, MEP rooms, uh, basically electrical rooms, telecom rooms, uh, and generator rooms. We are not using uh, sprinkler or uh, uh, I would say wet riser systems. Uh, we, it is kind of a gaseous fire suppression. Is it not used in uh, Sri Lanka uh, for the uh, MEP rooms? The first question. And the second question regarding the hot water system, uh, can you a little bit explain about? where we need a hot water return line in some cases even though we are using using uh, point of uh, use uh, electric water heaters uh, i can see some uh, return hot water lines and could you please uh, explain a bit uh, where we need uh, uh, hot water return uh, uh, for a hot water system 
Thank you very much, uh, Engineer Tushara. Uh, Engineer Ranga, thanks. And uh, uh, to explain the first uh, question that is uh, regarding the uh, fire protection of these uh, special areas that is like generator rooms, uh, electrical rooms, and telecommunication rooms. Yes, nowadays, uh, Engineer Ranga, Sri Lanka also, we are using these inert gas systems, IG, IG gas systems. Uh, for these kind of areas, uh, because uh, we cannot directly uh, use water there because uh, there are uh, things like uh, electrical uh, facilities and this uh, electronic uh, telecommunication uh, facilities. We cannot directly use uh, water, so special types of this uh, uh, suspension systems are being used now. So this is uh, now uh, in practice in Sri Lanka. Mostly uh, nowadays, this. Uh, High rise buildings, uh, these systems are being used. Uh, the other one is the hot water return. Uh, because uh, thing is now we supply hot water uh, in the temperature range of uh, like 50 to 55 degrees. And uh, we know this uh, mixing is happened uh, at the uh, using end. So when the mix mixing is happened, uh, certain water, uh, total water flow will not be used for the uh, for the uh, end user. So what will happen? The balanced water we have to return. So balanced water returning we we have to do in the same manner, but with uh, less pipe size, uh, uh, less pipe size, uh, we, we we have to take it take it back to the uh, plant room. So in many of these high rise uh, buildings or larger facilities, this water returning has to be uh, done. Uh, so I think uh, it is uh, uh, clear for you, engineer. Is that? Yes, uh, engineer Tushara. Thank you very much, and uh, wish you all the best. And uh, I'm really uh, happy to attend this CPD. Thank you very much, uh, engineer Tushara. Thank you. Thank you very much, engineer. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Anga. The uh, very good question. So uh, let's move to uh, Sadit Sanjeev. Hello. Yeah, Hadi, yes. please go ahead with your question. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. sir can I, I want to know that uh, for the fire system. Okay. Hello? Uh, am I oh, audible? Yes. Yeah, very well audible. You can uh, ask your question. Yeah, for the fire system, sir, uh, do we need to have the separate uh, fire, fire pumps? Yes, for the fire systems, uh, must that we you should use uh, dedicated pumps because uh, uh, nowadays uh, regulations uh, not allow you to uh, use uh, these plumbing pumps or uh, these kind of pumps for fire system because uh, reliability because of the reliability issues uh, because fire fire, fire is uh, now critically considered in sri lanka also because of the recent incidents so it has to be uh, uh, dedicate uh, it has to be dedicated pumps, but in some cases, like uh, 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 some instances, there are places that uh, small uh, like buildings, uh, some uh, like that uh, horse wheel pumps. Uh, uh, we are only these horse wheel pumps are involved. Uh, some people uh, do this, but uh, uh, it's not uh, recommendable anyway. Yeah, this is uh, actually sir. This is regarding. Uh, I am working at water board. This is regarding our treatment plant. Uh, it is which is under construction now. The 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 that the, the integrator that fire system people they they are asking that uh, they need a separate pump. But the our our contractor main contractor they are offering uh, they can use that our process system uh, water supply pumps from the water from the process system. Can can we allow to like that too? Thing what is, is uh, you have to follow local regulations. Uh, that is the mandatory part uh, because mm -hmm. in the local regulation you have to see any fair provision is there. So that is uh, you have to consider because uh, 
first uh, you have to uh, understand the area and the type of uh, the building or build or the premises then according to that you have to refer the this uh, guidelines to the rules given in the local uh, this cida cida publication so i recommend you to follow it for this particular case uh, generally it is not recommendable but uh, in certain cases if this uh, regulation can be uh, met then uh, and then uh, we can we can uh, request the approval from the fire department that you have to uh, specifically study and uh, uh, speak okay sir thank you thank you very much sir thank you thank you hope you got the answer sir so uh, attendance now you can mark that we have shared in the uh, google uh, zoom chat and also in uh, youtube chat box you can mark the attendance while others are asking their questions next uh, we have engineer yoga prachan right yoga prajapan uh, you can ask your question yoga prajapan uh, can uh, you hear sir, me can you hear me yeah very well very well please go ahead with your question uh so first question is uh, can you prefer what what are the sofias uh, preferred sofias for the plumbing design yeah there are certain sofias available for this uh, uh, sizing of the pump heads uh, yeah you can use uh, for the sizing of pumps you can use uh, uh, sofias there are several sofias uh, i cannot tell uh, mention names because it is going to be promotion of something so you better uh, study because there are certain sofias are there but uh, uh, before that i mean i before using software you should have the basic understanding the concepts everything should be uh, thoroughly uh, known uh, then uh, uh, it is no issue using software and uh, uh, minimize the time that uh, you need uh, to develop your design so when we are planning uh, uh, using the pipe charts or something uh, you can't exactly get the what's the pipe size so uh, in that case uh, you have to make some tolerance because uh, if we get about uh, uh, pipe diameter between 25 to 50, 32 uh, you you will select uh, 32 uh, that case the other characters will be changed so that case uh, that mean do we have any additional tolerance to be consider means ultimately you should arrive with the balance system uh, in, uh, for like uh, a particular uh, sanitary appliance or a end point uh, let's say now uh, you cannot go 25 and you have to go 32 size but uh, uh, this uh, while achieving this so you should uh, always uh, think or have some idea about the balancing of the flow in the sense in, uh, uh, in other words uh, a nearby point you can make uh, somewhat uh, in a uh, let's say now uh, shower you have to go for 32 then uh, the uh, water closet uh, supply you can go for half inch or 15 millimeter likewise uh, uh, some balancing should be there in order to uh, avoid unnecessary this uh, uh, velocity uh, hikes, uh, pressure uh, friction uh, losses. Uh, you have to avoid it as much as possible because uh, this uh, otherwise this velocity is uh, going. If, if it is going very high, then it is uh, it will make the pipes uh, uh, ero eroded. If, uh, the velocity high velocity make erosion, so that you have to avoid. Always, uh, you have to just uh, uh, play with these uh, two, three parameters and come to the best solution. Sir, so one sir. final question. Uh, okay. When we are considering the uh, maintenance, uh, we, we want to know that uh, if there are any pipe leakages or pipe overflow or something, uh, that kind uh, can can you comment on uh, are there any le leakage monitoring and uh, pipe meters systems are available 
for the pipe uh, leakage uh, observation, the best thing would be the uh, pressure, uh, monitoring the pressure, because uh, once you uh, once you uh, have a leak point, then what will happen? The pressure will be dropped. So uh, if it's a booster pump, if the case is a booster pump, then the booster pump pressure will be uh, 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 dropped. So that's how you can uh, understand uh, any 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 pressure. Sir, uh, uh, the case. booster pump, sir, booster pump is that uh, some whole 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 system. Uh, yeah. If we individually local local leakages, how can we identify, sir? That means so leakages inside the walls or something. Yeah, you mean? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, inside uh -huh. the walls, uh, we will not need any 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 particular equipment because uh, we will uh, physically we will observe it once it happens. Uh, inside the shaft, uh, shafts, uh, even uh, uh, we don't need these specific types of uh, equipment because we can always uh, visible the leaks. Anyway, for uh, water leakages, uh, uh, what you have to do is always uh, be be uh, be aware of the system, and this uh, routine maintenance team should be educated, well educated, and uh, uh, request to do their duty. Uh, so, so that you can minimize because this uh, leakage detectors and everything will be costly. Uh, best thing would be uh, go with this uh, uh, observation, routine observation. Thank you, sir. Informative. All right. Uh, next, we have uh, Samir Disanayaka. You can ask a question now, Samir. Can you hear me? Yeah, very well. Go ahead. Uh, in your, in your presentation, you that mentioned the fire pump always should be a positive suction. Is it a compulsory or can we go for the negative suction also? Uh, uh, there is one provision in the local regulation that is you have to use uh, vertical turbine type pumps otherwise. Uh -huh. That is the uh, provision. So otherwise you have to maintain the positive head because with the negative head, uh, uh, if the if this uh, priming not happens well, then the what uh, all this uh, protection system is in uh, in in, in uh, no use. That's why positive pressure is all, always the priming. Otherwise, this negative pressure systems always we need to uh, install with priming systems. If your priming system is not working properly, then what will happen? Then uh, we cannot uh, uh, run our uh, Fire pumps in in, 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 in some uh, emergency situation. So there is a provision only for this vertical turbine type uh, pumps. Other than that, we have to use positive uh, suction, positive suction always. This uh, you can uh, read the more details in uh, local CEDA regulation. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Raj. Thank you, Samira, for the. Your question and uh, if there is any question we can answer now there is no hand raise currently any question please raise your hand okay if you have any question you can uh, raise your hand if not uh, it's 9 for 13 it's always uh, almost we are running out uh, of the time so right thank you very much uh, Actually, we had a very successful session today with engineer Tushar, with his great experience and vast knowledge in his subject. So we really thankful to you, Mr. Tushar, that uh, dedicating this time for us and your commitment towards the success of this program, especially under the very tough conditions, power cuts and other challenges overcoming everything and uh, giving you a hundred percent to this program. We really salute you. We're really thankful to you about uh, your support. And I would like to hear uh, something from you, for, especially for the participants with a very young age who are willing to expose to the industry. And definitely you will have a lot to share, but the key points, if you can just give ad something like advice for their development, it will be great. Yeah, Engineer Sanjay, uh, 
first of all thanks a lot for giving me this opportunity uh, as, uh, as i saw uh, there were many uh, individuals uh, joined with this session so it shows uh, our young generation is having very high interest in uh, joining this uh, mep sector so that is really really interesting for us also because uh, Nowadays, uh, what we experience is uh, is a different thing. Uh, uh, our, especially our young crowd uh, uh, is much focused on uh, like uh, migration and other things. But thing is, uh, you have to be thorough with this uh, uh, knowledge and know how uh, before you are going to do anything. So it is really uh, happy to see such a large. Uh, a uh, number of uh, uh, young, our young engineers, maybe young engineers, young engineering students, everybody here. So please uh, keep this uh, momentum uh, with you uh, for, the, for the time to come. Because uh, once you have this, uh, all the uh, uh, knowledge and uh, this uh, know-how, then it is not uh, going to be a difficult task to enroll in any heavy uh, work uh, related to these building uh, services. So uh, once you are going to uh, be uh, occupied in a certain project or run your own business maybe, so this would be a great uh, platform to gather, your, gather further knowledge. And this would be a great initiation uh, uh, which is organized by our team, uh, Sanjay and our team. So make use of that and uh, be prepared for the, for the time to come. And uh, hopefully this uh, difficult time uh, will, be, will not be there for a longer time. So, uh, so what you do is the uh, thing to do is, is, the, uh, is the way to do. So uh, be focused on your uh, uh, education, uh, your uh, interest of uh, investigation, new areas like this. Uh, we'll, we'll give our fullest uh, uh, support uh, whenever we can. Uh, so uh, with that, I wish you, everybody, uh, a great uh, uh, success and uh, great future. Thanks a lot, Engineer Sanjay. Thank you very much, Engineer Tushara. Uh, I think uh, it's very wise thoughts and uh, hope everybody will have a lot to take from that. And with that, uh, actually, once again, thanks for your commitment and the dedication towards the success of this program. And we believe that your support towards the you know, development of the future generation will be extended more and more in the future. And if you have any question, participants, you can send via WhatsApp to our organizing team that we can share with the presenters and we will come back to you with answers from them. And also, thank you very much, all the audience, been a great audience throughout this, all three sessions, and we hope we will have the last session in next week before the Christmas. And with that remarks, once again, thanks to the, all the resource persons and the all the organizing committee. And on behalf of Magnus Academy, thank you very much and good night to you all. See you next week. Thank you very much. Thank you very much and good night to you.